Hello, I wanted to show you something neat. Um, it's only been speculative up until now, but uh, thanks to uh, my research and uh, the light bending capacity of the ferro cell, uh, I now am able to determine. Now, the only birds that can actually see blue light are owls, um, but nevertheless, uh, most birds can actually see into the ultraviolet spectrum, so what, um, as I proved with the seed experiments before, um, that you can actually, let me lay this down, this thing is just insanely dangerous. I don't actually like to get my face over top of it because it hurts my eyeballs after a while. Let me see if my camera's messing up. Really, <laughs> I shouldn't have even my camera this close uh, to this little unit right now. It's a huge, powerful neodymium iron boron magnet. Uh, it's just enormous. Actually, we've got a lot of, uh, of course, we have a lot of blood, iron in our blood. You can actually uh, uh, drag uh, your wrist over the centrifugal uh, divergent edge of the magnet and uh, actually feel the field. And I'm not talking about new age crystal rubbing nonsense. You can actually feel it. Um, we have a lot more uh, receptors in our nose. Uh, however, I wouldn't want to bring a magnet this large uh, to my nose. Now this is a, a giant uh, neodymium iron boron. It's an $800 magnet. Um, anyway, the point is, is that humans have chromatomes in their eye. They're uh, magnetoreceptive uh, parts uh, of a human eyeball, just like birds have. And I'm going to scoot away from it because I can actually start to feel it. Most people never play around with magnets. This so <laughs> is an enormous... Um, divergent uh, centrifugal reciprocating hyperboloidic uh, uh, field that's reciprocating around uh, this magnet and it uh, actually hurts my eyes after a short period of time when I experiment over it. But the point is that uh, the way birds navigate, since the Earth's magnetic north pole is actually in Antarctica, uh, you know, our, our geographic north pole is where our Earth's magnetic south pole is. That's why a compass a needle points north towards the uh, actual North Pole. You can Google this if you want. I mean, it's obviously a fact. But uh, what you can actually see in the ferro cell, and uh, this was actually the last, not regarding the birds, but the last secret that I finally unraveled, is that, as is the case, if you use a, a Gauss meter on a magnet, you'll notice that there is a, a singular strong high Gauss flux reading at the very center, it's the centripetal point of return, and then there's an intermediate zone and there's an extremely high Gauss reading uh, on the centrifugal edge on both sides, but the Gauss reading, if the magnet is made correctly, is identical on centrifugal on both sides and centripetal on both sides. So whence therefore is the phase shift. You can actually see the phase shift using light that is bent a la the Faraday effect by looking at the magnet underneath the ferro cell. Uh, it is rarefied on the north pole of the magnet and it's compressed on the south. This actually affects, say, the molecular nature of hydrous oxide, i.e. water, which affects plant growth, but it's a lot more complicated than that, and I can't get into that because I haven't published it yet. I'm working on the fourth edition of the book. I don't like to get my face as close to the magnet. You can actually feel it in your face this ginormous man. <laughs> you can feel it in your face, trust me. It actually gives you a natural high and that'll actually keep you awake for a couple of days without caffeine. Um, but it is extremely odd and has no after effects. But it actually gives you a dull, throbbing pain in your eyes. But the point is, is that how birds navigate, since they're actually able to see further into the ultraviolet spectrum of uh, the uh, electromagnetic spectrum, they are actually able to see now, this has been speculated about now, but I know it's the case now because I'm the first person, as I discussed with the inventor of the ferro cell, uh, that there is a phase shift in the light using RGB, uh, RGB LED arrays on, uh, on the, uh, the ferro cell, that there's a phase shift that is uh, rarefied on the North Pole and is, uh, is uh, compressed on the South Pole. So you have rarefaction and you actually have compression. And there's a reason for this, and superficially one might think, well, how is that the case? Since the Gauss meter reading is identical on both sides, how can we have a phase shift? And the reason for that is very simple, but I will publish the full details of that in the fourth book 
on uncovering the secrets of magnetism. And uh, I'll give you the really, really short version of this without elaborate explanation. And this information is copyright, by the way, uh, May uh, 2015 by myself, is uh, that uh, due to the formula that uh, I discovered for magnetic uh, flux reciprocation, does not undergo, since it has no uh, transverse vector, it is uh, purely a longitudinal reciprocation. Actually, if you look at the hyperboloid, it is a two-dimensional uh, a two-dimensional loss of inertia, or as Faraday called it, uh, he called it the dielectric field. So even though this magnet, for example, I don't like to get that, I keep leaning over top of it, and I can feel it in my face. Even though the magnet is a three-dimensional object, the actual flux density operates without any transverse vectors. It is a purely longitudinal reciprocation within the hyperboloid. What we're seeing is, is that since light has transverse electrical and magnetic components along its z-axis radial dielectric uh, perturbation through the ether, is that it must, because it has transverse, a phenomenal alternating electromagnet, whether it's linear polarization or circular polarization, it has transverse reciprocations which must undergo necessitatively the phase shift of the after effect of the loss of inertia which manifests itself as magnetism, the magnetism itself being longitudinal and circular, it is actually a dimensional phase shift that exists only with transverse phenomena such as matter, water, anything that has any phenomenal characteristics to it, i.e. Uh, volume. Light has volume. All light has volume because it has transverse electrical magnetic components. But the important thing is, is that I actually made this to talk about birds since most people don't care about this complex stuff, but this very last discovery that I've made is huge. And, uh, and uh, I kind of thought it was an enigma, but I finally figured it out. And I've got it, and I've got the proof for it, and I know why it is, and how it is, and it, it is simplicity beyond divinity itself. I mean, it is, it is just incredibly simplex. And uh, I, I was just walking around blissed out for days after finally figuring out that last secret. I kind of knew what the answer was, but I hadn't connected all the dots. But I was overthinking it, but I finally figured it out. But as for birds, as far as what you folks might be interested in, birds can actually see this rarefaction and compression of the light, the sunlight that enters in through our atmosphere. So birds can actually see a phase shift, just like on the ferro cell. If I had a ferro cell large enough for this magnet, for example, you notice that the North Pole would look red shifted. It would actually be red, and the South Pole would be blue shifted. It would be compressed. So birds and other critters actually navigate vis-a-vis -vis, um, not the magnetic field specifically, but the chromatomes in their eyes, what it does is, man, I can feel it. I mean, I can feel it. i got to scoot back. I mean, I can literally feel it. I've been hovering over this magnet for too long. They see the phase shift in the light. So if they're actually pointing their way south, they'll actually see red light. Now, certain birds obviously can't. Uh, only owls can see blue light. But they can also see, all the birds can see greatly into the ultraviolet end of the spectrum. So they still see a color phase shift. Whether that's gradated, or they see it as purple hue gradation, it doesn't matter. The point is that they're able to see that uh, specular phase, that, uh, that the spectral phase shift, simply by pointing their head one way or the other. So it's not that they're actually seeing the magnetic fields, they are, but they're actually seeing the phenomenal after, uh, after, after effects, the, the attributional effects of that phase shift uh, because it is affecting the light and how it is phased over the Earth's north and south pole. And that phase shift is easily seen underneath the ferrocell. cell. It must necessitatively exist. It is called the Lamour frequency. It is geromagnetic precession. So even while this magnet has uh, identical Gauss meter readings on uh, either side, those do not have transverse vectors. Magnetism is a longitudinal loss of inertia. It'd take me hours to explain that to you and it'd probably bore the piss out of you. But that explains why the magnet is equally balanced in Gaussian readings on either side, but it is completely lopsided in uh, its phase shift. And one last thing, the degree to which it is lopsided, you'll like this part. The degree to which it is lopsided on each and every magnet 
is the same ratio that defines an egg. You know how the top part is pointed like this and the bottom part is fat? Well, that is a ratio of 5 to 1. That means the south pole is like the fat end of the egg, is blue shifted, and the north pole is rarefied. It would be like the pointed end of an egg. Yet the fields look identical, as far as the reciprocating processional hyperboloid. Underneath the ferrocell, cell, they're identical. Yet the phase shift of the transverse phenomena that interact with either pole is different. And the reason for that is that they have transverse vectors which are spatial and phenomenal, and therefore they must undergo the reciprocating processional hyperboloid phase shift that exists and differentiate between the Gaussian reading of either end of this pole. If you understand that, you're a genius. <laughs> it's hard to explain, but it is so divinely simple. And I crap you not, I can actually feel this hitting my face. Every time I lean over this huge, huge, insanely expensive magnet, it fries my eyeball. It's like a dull pain, kind of like walking out in the bright sunlight for a long time. Um, I kid you not, it's, uh, I, I still got a couple minutes. It, it's, I don't want to get that close, but you, if you actually ever walked on the beach for a long period of time and uh, you didn't have sunglasses on and, you know, the glare from the sun is coming up and you just get that dull, dull, dull thud in your eyes, that's exactly what it feels like, except it's very, very fast. When I was hunched over there for a few, every time I hunch over this sucker, this always happens. Um, it's not my brain, I'm not like projecting. You can actually feel it. Um, it is just an enormous, enormous SOB of a beast of a magnet. Um, and by the way, if I were to hold this and stupidly walk by a metal door, it would chop my effing fingers right off. <laughs> That's not funny. I mean, so everywhere you walk with it, it if you get within a few inches, uh, half a foot of a metal door, or like a safe or something, I mean, you're in danger of chopping your damn fingers off. So, ah, exactly. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, I know this wasn't specifically photographic related, but uh, I was making tons of videos about magnetism before I started making videos about photography. Loxi Veritas, and I will catch you later.